Hello, everybody. I wanted to come on tonight because I wanted to talk to you all about the spirit that is lurking behind this COVID-19 virus that has gripped the whole world. And I wanted to talk to you about it because aside from the fact that it is a health issue, it is gripping the world in such a way that it has pretty much crippled us, the world is right now just standing in disbelief of the fact that it is spreading quickly. It is not consistent because I've looked at different cases and they've even said in the news, you know, some people have certain symptoms. For some people, it's more severe. Some people don't have any symptoms. Some people, it takes them into... Uh, intensive care situations. Some people, it just is like a, a normal cold. So it's so many variables to this disease. Aside from the fact that it has pretty much been taking control of the lives of many throughout the world, we've had places like China where it started, and there are some conspiracies about this uh, virus as to whether it's truly a virus or if it's a biochemical. I'm still on the fence about that. As well as Italy uh, shut down completely. Other countries have shut down. States within uh, the U.S., um, the Bahamas, where I'm from originally, they are on a 24-hour shut-in and I'm not pretty sure how long that's going to last. I live in Georgia. Here in Georgia, the city of Atlanta has put the city on a shelter in for 14 days. The city that I am in, they have just pretty much, you know, cut down hours. Um, have They haven't really uh, locked down tightly in the city where I am. But I want to talk about the spirit behind this virus because... I've been dealing with some feelings since this all started, especially when we realized how it was spreading so quickly and had spread here to the U.S. And I started to think that I was alone in how I was feeling. I started to question my walk with God. I started to question my faith because I was having bouts of anxiousness, feeling almost fear trying to grip me. And just going back and forth in my mind, I deal with allergies right before this whole thing just bust wide open here in the U.S. and pretty much started spreading. I had a serious sinus cold for about a month. I mean, it took about a month for me to shake this thing. And so pretty much um, right before it just really started spreading. I had just gotten over this bad cold and a bad, horrible cough, which had set up in my chest like mucus and all of that. But after listening at my pastor, after hearing his wife, after listening to well-known gospel singer and pastor Donnie McClurkin and even others, I realized that there is a spirit that's behind this whole situation and it's it's past the fact of just being a virus a health situation for the believer i believe that the enemy is really trying to grip the believer with fear and the spirit of fear i heard donnie mcclarkin say he was taking so much medicine he felt like he was probably over medicating himself trying to get ahead of the curve um, the pastor's wife, my pastor's wife mentioned how she had been diagnosed with asthma some time ago, and then she deals with allergies. So every little tickle or feeling she was questioning, is that it? Is that it coming on me? 
Um, my pastor even said when he first learned about how it was spreading in the U.S. so quickly, he felt an anxiousness coming up in him. And I have had the same feelings where I deal with the allergies and I just got off the cold. So I'm still having a little bit of allergy issues with the time of the year and the sinuses. And so if I feel a little tickle, tickle in my throat or I'm just checking to make sure and I've been taking different vitamins and gargling with warm salt water and vinegar and doing all sorts of things. And I truly believe that the enemy behind all of this, we know that he's in the earth. He's he's wanting to steal and he, he does steal, kill and destroy. The Bible tells us that that's what he comes to do. Um, but I feel like a spirit of fear is attached to this whole thing and is trying to grip the hearts of the believers. And I just want to speak on that because God has not given us a spirit of fear. And we know that the Bible tells us that. And just from my own personal experience within um, just a past few months back in December, I had to fly home for my aunt's funeral. And on the flight, the first flight leaving out of Atlanta into Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, I kid you not, it was the bumpiest ride. I mean, the whole just about two hour flight was rough, so much so that they did not serve drinks. And I've told this story on other, another video before, but I'm getting to a point. They did not serve uh, any soft drinks on that flight because it was such a bumpy ride. And I remember being just so gripped and with fear and I just was so beside myself to the point that I had to pull up one of my own inspirational videos and listen to it on repeat for the better part of the flight to get myself together till I got to a point where the Lord just allowed me to feel a peace and assurance to realize that hey if this is it then this is just it if this is it then obviously I have done all that God has already called me to do. And then this is just the way I'm going to go out. And so that experience put me in the frame of mind to realize that I had an issue with fear. Um, then in January, because I hurt my shoulder back in October, um, I had to do an MRI in my shoulder and so had to go into this little small tube to do the MRI. I had done an MRI before but this MRI was in a small tube and I have problems with being held in one place. I feel like I have like, just, I'm going to suffocate. So they had to strap my one arm down the next arm. I had to hold a little thing to press the button. If I panicked, it was so small. It literally felt like I was laying in a coffin. And so while this was happening, I remember even telling the lady to please let me out, let me out at one point. And she said, honey, if I let you out, I'm going to have to start all over. And it only was a 20 minute situation, but it was the longest 20 minutes. I don't even think it was 20 minutes. Um, and I remember just repeating the scripture in my mind. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And so I just honestly believe that God was showing me myself in those two instances to show me that I had an issue with of being fearful in certain situations. And, you know, I think about how we can trust God in some things and we believe God in some things and we have all the faith in the world in some things. But then when it comes to other situations, our faith seems to waver. And, you know, again, like I said, the Bible tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear. And I believe that the enemy is trying to attach fear to the believer. I heard my pastor say on um, a couple of weeks ago that, you know, when he was having that anxiousness and he reminded us that anytime we are overcome with fear to a point where it is just overtaking us. And I don't feel like I've actually experience that in this situation with this virus. I have had instances where I felt anxiety a little bit and a little anxious and I'm going to be honest, a little fear, but it has not gotten to the point where it's overtaken me. I've been in my word. I've been in a praise and worship and, and just going before the Lord and trying to keep my spirit uplifted. But I do believe on that flight, 
And as well as during the time that I took the MRI, God was showing me my fears and how I had to deal with that fear. But he was saying a lot of times when we have that fear that overtakes us, it just shows us how close we are or are not to God and how much we believe his word. So I just wanted to come on because I just thought about the fact that I had had these uh, instances and when I heard the pastor and then his wife on tonight uh, during press service online mentioned it and then Donnie McClurkin said the same thing I said well obviously this is a common theme here so I wonder if other believers are having this same and it's it's an unprecedented situation my pastor is in his 60s um, and you know I don't believe that he is no one I guess in this generation has seen anything to this degree. There have been other viruses, but the way it's it's so many unknowns and variables and the way it's 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 spreading through the earth. And I believe honestly it is a time of fasting and prayer and drawing closer to God, a, a time of repentance. And you know, for the unbeliever, definitely a time to seek God um because his spirit is not going to be with us always. Seek him now while he can be found. Call upon his name right now while he is near because he has allowed all of this for a reason. And the reason I believe firmly, and I've heard other pastors have said this, but I've, I've believed this because I know that God sometimes have to allow drastic situations to get our attention. And here, this is unprecedented. He is trying to get the attention of the world. So if you are someone who has not received Christ in your life, I would welcome you to seek God, you know, seek him with your whole heart because he won't withhold his spirit from you. If you seek him, if you, you know, ask him to forgive you and truly repent and to profess him and confess him with your mouth and to believe in your heart that you would be saved. And to the believer, there are areas that you may feel that you need to pull up in. There may be things that you feel like you need to repent for. If you have not done so, then do so. Do it now. Don't wait. You know, God is calling us to repentance I mean, why else? He is still on the throne. He has not left the throne. God is still in control. Why else would he allow his children to go through this? He is not pleased with the lifestyle as a whole, the church body as a whole. We have come com become complacent. We have become, and when I say we, I'm speaking in general. The church in general has become complacent, has become worldly, and more like an entertainment venue, more so, than, more so than the sanctuary and the house of God and the house of prayer. And, you know, God is not pleased. So I just want to encourage you as well. You know, if you are having bouts with anxiousness, go to the word of God, seek God in prayer, repent and seek his face. And to the unbeliever, his doors are open. He's waiting with open arms. He's knocking. And if you hear him knocking, if you open the door to your heart, he will come in. And so be encouraged. We are going to get through this. This virus is here for a reason. And whether it came by evil means of the hands of man, we know the enemy is at the root of it at the end of the day. And so we're just going to look to God who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And if you've read the word of God, you know how the story ends. And the enemy, Satan, he loses. We win. So we just have to go through these testing times. I read in Revelation 13 the other day that, you know, the uh, the righteous of God, we are, we are going to go through testing times. And we have to go through it with patience because there are going to be some that are going to be tested and tried. Some may be uh, lose their lives during this battle. And so that's another question that we have to ask ourselves. And I've been asking myself, am I truly in a position that if I had to lay my life on the line to uphold my beliefs and my firm beliefs and faith, am I ready to do that? And that's the question we as believers have to ask because as the, as the time draws on, we are going to be put in more and more situations where our faith is going to be tested 
and we're going to be tried on every hand. It's happening in other parts of the world and some places we have not experienced that and now we're getting a taste of it. Beloved, be encouraged. Seek after God with your whole heart. Be blessed. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.